G'day, my name's Alan Baldwin. I am an English-born Australian, a Kubra-wearing, sunglass-toting carp enthusiast from Victoria in Australia. And I call myself the Canny Carper. He's the dude who's in the mood to pull some carp out for you. He's the dude who's in the mood to show you just what to do. Blank day yesterday, so hopefully today will be a bit better. Weather's a bit colder. Winds and feels a chill factor a little bit. But, however, I have seen a fish bosh out right where I was fishing yesterday. Exact same spot. I haven't gone that close to the island today. I've, I've pulled back a bit and I've gone more into the centre of the swim, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, that was an encouraging sign. Nice golden flank sort of came out the water and a big tail slapped down. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Here's a moody looking skyscape for you. Well, in a remarkable uh, display of the resourcefulness of nature when confronting man-made infrastructure. You can see over my shoulder there, there's a, a water plume goes up into the air here. It's the aerator for the lake. It helps keep the water oxygenated and yeah, in the summer months, it helps keep the green algae down. It won't be such an issue now. And I just noticed one of the Australasian darters dive through the water plume and then land and then submerge. I've noticed before, the darters, their, their modus operandi is they tend to go underwater, swim, catch a fish, come out, go and dry. A bit like uh, shags and such like. When they then re-enter the water, it does, however, take them a few seconds before their bodies sink below the surface. And their bodies have to sink below the surface before they can dive. So when they're dry, they, you know, it takes them a little time to get wet again. Um, so this guy saved himself a good three or four seconds, I reckon, by going through that water plume. He was wet when he hit the water and he was able to dive straight away. He went straight under. It was great. Wish I'd have got it on camera. We have white ducks back in the swim. Good to see. fish ever but a nice one all the same about seven pound or something got him on a, a dumbbell wafter and um, yeah very welcome about uh, three hours had to wait for him but uh, very nice using a, a mesh PVA bag full of the uh, African Pellets, so yeah, good fish. Well, look into my eyes. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, here's the wafter rig that I was using. You can see it's uh, not less not through to. A fairly stiff, if I'm honest, sort of hair, but I, I, I like that, it doesn't tangle. And the a little bit of plastic over the just just to hold that, um, just to hold the hair opposite where the, the barb would be on that hook. I'm trying to get it so as you can see where the. It's barbless, I'm using a barbless hook, I've squashed it flat. And um, yeah, so that dumbbell wafter, that's caught two fish now. <laughs> All I do is rough it up each time. It's perfectly balanced, I don't see why I need to change it. I'll sharpen the hook and use that tomorrow. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. So that was good. It was um, 
African fish food pellets. The uh, attractant in the uh, PVA mesh bag, so I'll keep doing it. I'll keep using it. Three hours for that fish to come along. You know, that's that's okay. At least, at least I know that these things are fishing when I leave them out there a long time. Okay, guys, short and sweet this one. Look, please subscribe, um, hit like if you did like, and um, we'll see you next time. Take it away, Gypsy John. He's the dude who's in the mood to pull some carp out for you. He's the dude who's in the mood to show you just what to do for canny carp.